This is the 1969 Chevy Impala known as the Crusher Impala. And blasting it around just now reminded me of exactly how much I love this car, which is kind of surprising considering I used to hate it. I bought this thing for, I can't remember, 1,500 or 1,800 bucks way back when we were doing a roadkill episode with the guys from Mighty Car Mods. And what I wanted to do was impress these Australian guys with the most ridiculous engine in the largest barge I can find. Over the years on both Roadkill and Roadkill Garage, we've just slowly progressed this thing and it's gotten better and better. It does the most awesome burnouts. It blasts the highway, no problem. You can drive it 75 miles an hour all day and you can take it to the drag strip, and therein lies the problem. The big block Chevy has been rebuilt. Me and Steve did it on an episode of Roadkill Garage. It's 498 cubic inches. It has a tiny camshaft, tiny Brodick cylinder heads, mid-length headers. It is not built for giant power. What I'm planning on doing here is primarily fix the transmission that won't shift. You just saw that. And the worst thing about this car is that the power steering has been dead forever. But number one priority is make it shift and get it back to the drag strip. We're going to jack it up and look at the little pressure modulator doohickey on the side of the transmission and maybe even go so far as to drop the pan and get ATF all over the floor. And then we're going to discover that we don't know how to deal with the automatic transmission. Test drive it, it'll still fail, and then we're going to change the transmission. Ready for it to come down? Yep. Now, here's a little tech tip for you guys. You may think that jacking only the front is gonna make it intrusively low in the back. But because of controlled jack stand placement, you'll notice that the car will actually teeter-totter and it'll lift the back end as the front end comes down. Pay attention and don't miss it. Here it goes. Whoa, what was that? That was the teeter-totter action. Wow, something made a loud cracking sound. Well, that might be the jack stand failing. Neither Steve nor I have any idea how to actually fix a Turbo 400 automatic transmission, but we're gonna give it a shot anyway by throwing parts at it. What I'm working on here is the vacuum modulator, and the job of this thing is to regulate line pressure in proportion to engine vacuum. So at part throttle, at higher vacuum, it would have lower line pressure, and that would act on the governor to make it shift sooner. This is not shifting at wide open throttle at all. And what I don't know is if perhaps boost from the blower has blown out the diaphragm in this. And if it did do that, I have no idea what it would affect on the transmission. Here's my old vacuum modulator right there. And here's the new one. You can see that they are identical, except for that the new one has an adjustable doohickey inside the vacuum port so you can make it shift sooner or later. I'm gonna leave it at the factory setting for now. I got the new modulator in and now we're just gonna drain the fluid and see if it's more burned than I think it is or if there's any chunks in it or anything like that. This is where I'm gonna get ATF all over my hand, right? No! Oh, the filter's just about to fall off. Really? Yep. Wow. That's super bad. It can't be. Okay, this is weird. That bolt is fully ramrodded and it's still loose. There's no way that's supposed to be loose, is there? What I wanna do here is cut open the transmission filter so I can pull out the filter media and inspect it for debris. It kinda gives us an idea of how much wear and tear there is on the transmission or if there's any component failure. I caution you to use extreme care because the edges are very sharp. Not a damaging amount of debris. This filter element has been doing its job, but then the corrugations of metal in the filter body had a massive amount of 
debris. That would have circulated through the transmission before it ended up in the pan and sucked back in. Whether or not that's problematic, we're going to see when we test drive the car. Man, I just Googled Turbo 400 filters, and it turns out that looseness that I was seeing is normal. I should know that, but I didn't. Turns out everybody asks that question. You can bolt it up solid, but I just lost my spacer for that. It's weird because the bolt that comes with it has a stop on it that leaves it kind of loose. Really strange to me. Obviously, this is my first Turbo 400. And next, I'm going to see if I can get the governor out here. It might hit the floor. There we go. That is the governor. It's got weights. And as it spins, those fly out from centrifugal force and adjust shift RPM at wide open throttle. There's also a valve inside it that needs to move freely. And I'm going to go get a tiny screwdriver so I can check that out. There is a valve inside this that needs to freely move up and down. And you can see right there sort of that valve. Now watch. I hold the weights in and tap it. Now you can see that that valve has moved. This gap is up here at the top. But watch what happens when I let go of the weights. Shoop. It moves up. So that thing's moving all freely and perfectly. I guess I'm just going to reinstall it and cross my fingers. I haven't found anything wrong with the transmission so far. I'm going to button this up. We'll put fluid in it, and we're going to go test drive it again to see if maybe new fluid, different filter, different modulator, see if one of those things fixes the problem. Not a speck of metal out of the engine. Great. Well, you know who built it. Us. Yeah. All right, how are we going to find out if this works? We have to roll into wide open throttle and first gear manual and then shift it. Yeah, it's kind of scary. Or leave it in drive. Yeah, I just want to roll in as easy as I can, you know? Yeah. Fix! Fix. Boom! That's Boom. a bro shake. Boom! Boom! Once again, here we are at historic Famoso Drag Strip. Steve? Yes. We're going to go through the motions here, but really it's a foregone conclusion. Very anticlimactic what's about to happen. Really? Oh, yeah. We're just going to roll out there and run like, you know, 1084 on the first pass and pack it up and go home. Well, you're minimalizing this, but to me, it's the accumulation of my dreams for this car, even though it's not mine. <laughs> I feel like a certain sense of pride of ownership. Yeah. Is that possible? No, I like it when you get attached to my garbage. I <laughs> know. <laughs> the Crusher Impala's never been better than it is at this particular moment. Now, you just go out there and get it done, bro. How many times has this not happened? Every time. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. I hope this is a one and done. If the car hooks up, then uh, I think it runs what we need it to run. The burnout could have been a little hotter, I think. It's all going to come down to traction off the line and whether that transmission is shifting right. I think we have enough horsepower to get this done. I've got fingers crossed. Shift, shift. Oh. What happened there? I lifted because I thought it wasn't shifting, and then it shifted. It takes longer to shift than I anticipated. Ah, so that wasn't going to do it. We'll have to go right back. 11.25, so a couple of tenths off. I don't know what happened on that one-two shift. I'm just going to have to talk to David. I really can't identify what it was, but I heard a stutter. I think the governor weights in this thing don't want to shift to like seven grand, I think is the deal. I hope he knows what he's doing. He's got a lot of experience with these things. 
Let's see if it pulls a tire off the starting line. That's shifting a lot better. No stutter. You're shifting at a lower RPM. Ten ninety six. Yeah. That's our ten second time slip. Read them and we. Well, it spun the tires pretty hard off the line that time, uh, but it went through the gears. I short shifted first second because I thought it was just going to keep going, but the transmission's working. It's weird. The car is geared so high with that. 350 rear gear, but it doesn't go third gear till almost in the lights. Uh-oh, Steve's got a good look on his face. What'd you say? I said you have a good look on your face. Check it out, bro. Done. Yes. 1096. But well, finally, it's a 10 second car. It is. I always said that if it just did it, we were going to pack it up and go home. It's good enough. No, it's, you're going to go again. Before you have to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we've already had the money round. We have our 10 second time slip. Now it's just all for ego gratification. That was a nice launch. I think he's winding it out a little higher too. I think that was gonna be better. And the number is? 10.95. Okay, we shaved a uh, hundredth. <laughs> it left smooth, didn't spin the tire, higher shift point. I think that was going to be good. That time it didn't feel like it left as hard, as violently, it was smoother. So we'll find out if that's quicker. Whoa, Nilly. What? <laughs> yeah. You picked up a hundredth. A hundredth? Yeah, it slowed down though too. It ran a 121.94 and uh -huh. it was a 1095 with the one. So either it really doesn't like the higher shift point or it got hot and slowed down. Either way, that's a big win, Steve. Oh. That's a goal we've had for this car since day one, and now it can go back to a gentle life of relentless <laughs> burnouts. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's for. Crusher and Paula for the win. <laughs>